Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Chris Lilly's Low and Slow Pork Butt. This was shot at Kingsford University, which I'm sure you're reading all about on the blog. Chris Lilly is a barbecue pit master world champion. So I'm going to let Chris take it away and explain the different ways that you can flavor the pork butt before it's barbecued. Let's talk a little bit about injection and flavoring, okay? You've got choices, okay? We can do a marinade, we can do a brine, we can do an injection if we're talking about liquid seasoning prior to cooking, okay? Marinade. We can soak this thing in a marinade forever. You're still only going to flavor the outer shell of the meat. There's no way you're going to pull the flavor all the way through to the bone. We can put it in a brine, but to pull the flavor into the meat, you're going to have to sit it in the brine for about probably 24 hours and it still may not get to the internal portion of the meat. Okay, a brine works through osmosis. All meat has salt in it, okay? But if you put it in a liquid that's saltier than the meat itself, it draws the liquid into the meat. And therefore, you've got the, the liquid encapsulated within the meat. When you cook it, you get a juicier uh, product, okay? Injection, and this is sort of like a brine. It's a salty liquid. If you taste it, it would be salty to the taste. Um, this is a quickie way to marinate or quickie way to brine. Okay, and it's instant too. I can have the flavor go all the way through to the bone. I can rub it down and I can put it on and, uh, and get to kicking. Get to cooking. But uh, I don't have to. And kicking as well. Drink it. Number one for you. So, um, so keep in mind when you're injecting though, too many people make the mistake of putting the a needle in and just squirting the plunger. Pork is not one muscle. Pork shoulder is not one muscle. It's many muscles over each other. Sometimes if you do that, the needle goes in between the muscles and you do the plunger and all of a sudden you get like a big pocket of injection in between, stuck in between the muscles. And believe me, it's gonna stay there through the cooking process and you're gonna have just a, a really harsh piece of meat here and then nothing over here. Okay, so when I go and inject, I go into the pork and one hole, and while I'm, I start plunging and I make several ports. Go into the next hole, several ports. Now, after you do it a while, it's. They're talking. Wow. Is a champion. Okay, my video is blurry. <laughs> all right, so after it was all injected beautifully, it went into that giant barbecue slash smoker for 14 hours at 225. Chris actually had to come back in the middle of the night, three in the morning, to tend to the fire. Uh, better him than me. But it was totally worth it. The next day, we enjoyed the pork butt for lunch. And you know how they call it pulled pork? It ain't pulled pork. It's pushed pork. Check this out. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. By the way, that pork is being expertly smushed and pressed by Todd from White on Rice. Nice job, Todd. And then he asked for some volunteers to help chop it up. But uh, once he saw that, like, you know, most of it was going on the floor, he took over, chopped the rest, and then made these unbelievably delicious pork sliders with the pulled, I mean pushed, pork, some spicy slaw in there. So incredibly delicious. So anyway, thanks, Mr. Chris Lilly. Amazing job. Thanks to Segazia Winery, where this pork love took place. And, uh, of course, thank you, Kingsford University. Anyway, be sure to read the blog post the recap, and uh, as always, enjoy.